guys, I'm a college student. <laughs> but I built seven apps, I've acquired millions of users, and I'm a part owner in a company worth nearly half a billion dollars. And so yes, I'm a college student, but I'm also a full-time entrepreneur. And I'm here to tell you that I don't think formal education is sufficient for everyone. It needs to be paired with something that you believe in or are passionate about. In a school structured environment, you learn lots about theory. But not many people actually put that to use. It's up to the individual to use those building blocks that education teaches them and make them practical. I developed a sense of thinking when I was pretty young. I was in eighth grade algebra class, and I was given a calculator at the time. It was called the TI-83. It was a pretty big calculator, but what was more interesting to me than the actual calculator was the manual. So I'm a weird kid reading a book. And Everyone was focused purely on this calculator and getting their homework done as quick as they can. But I took the extra time, did something no one else would do, and read this manual. And by reading this manual, I taught myself how to program my calculator. So by taking the extra time, I opened up a window of opportunity. I was now doing my algebra homework in five minutes while everyone else was doing it in two hours. So this sense of thinking just drove myself forward. And I wanted to see how I could apply myself more than just what I was learning. So after eighth grade, I go into high school and I'm in a web design class. So I already love this ability to code and make stuff, but numbers on a calculator is kind of boring. It doesn't really show anyone anything. So I started making websites, which was my form of art. So I've always loved the ability to create, but I can't draw anything pretty on a picture. So I was making websites and giving them out to the world to see, which was extremely rewarding. So summer comes around the corner and I don't want to stop. I don't want to just go to the pool, go on vacation, and hang out with my buddies. I want to do something new and innovative once again. But I didn't really want to make another website, because that's what everyone was doing. In eighth grade, everyone was doing their homework. I made a calculator app. So I wanted to make something else. I wanted to make something new, innovative. And at the time period, there was a, a device called an iPhone that came out. And I wanted to be an innovator in the app market. I wanted to be one of those first guys that made an app and put it out in the store for everyone to use. So I bought a book. This time it was on iPhone development. And I spent the majority of my time in my basement, in the dark, and by the end of the summer, I made my first ever app and put it on the app store for people to use. What it was was an excuse generator. So I didn't like doing my homework, and when I forgot to do it, it gave me an excuse to get out of that situation. But it didn't just apply to me, it applied to my parents. My dad was missing dates with my mom all the time and he needed a way to get out of it, so the app solved his problem. <laughs> Going on from that, not gonna lie, I kind of slowed up with education and really started focusing on tennis. I wanted to play college tennis and was dedicating 10, 15 hours a week out there in the hot sun, sweating away, playing the tennis ball. But I wasn't doing that well in it. I was losing a lot. And I wasn't actually learning from my losses. It was just constant, constant failure. It wasn't until when I was traveling in Augusta and I was playing a tennis instrument. I was up 6-0, 5-0. And if anyone has ever played the game of tennis or knows anything about it, there's probably a 99% chance I'm going to win that match. But I was at 1%. <laughs> I lost that match and was beyond mad at myself, complete disarray, went off the court throwing my racket, screaming. Took my cell phone, threw it, but I didn't throw it once. I threw it twice and I threw it three times because it didn't break the first two times. <laughs> LG makes some durable phones. <laughs> and there I'm sitting with my broken cell phone and my racket that's halfway cracked in disgust thinking, why am I at this point? And it was a complete failure. And that was when I realized that failure wasn't bad. At a time of complete disarray, Failure was my biggest teacher. It turned me that I could learn from this and I could make myself better and use that, use that mindset to then later excel in tennis and then apply that philosophy to life. So I'm in senior econ now, learning about supply and demand and different costs. And I discovered this clothing brand called Supreme. And I can't afford any of this clothing because it's really expensive, but I noticed a gap. The clothing's a lot more expensive overseas as it is in the US. So I took a risk with money I made working at Chick-fil-A and invested my own personal couple hundred bucks into this clothing brand. And I didn't, wasn't concerned about failure. I wanted to apply something I learned in the classroom to the real world again. So I did it, and I was able to make profit selling clothing overseas, much more than I was making Chick-fil-A. So here that ends. I'm going into college, the time when everyone's really supposed to learn a lot. And it turns out I'm spending more time outside the classroom learning about Android development than I am inside the classroom. 
And I was losing a few GPA, GPA points here and there, but I wasn't concerned about that because I believe the return on investment of me learning on my own, setting myself up for potential success was more valuable than getting a 4.0. So summer comes around the corner and I have so much knowledge that I prepared myself for and I'm ready to get back into the app game. So by the end of the summer, I released four apps, was able to acquire a couple hundred thousand users and was featured on tech sites such as TechCrunch, Mashable and really put myself in the sharks to experience something I never had, which was business on a big scale. I knew how to code, I knew how to make apps, but I didn't know anything about marketing, forming an LLC, and I just had to do it. I read some books, but I learned all of it through experience because I put myself in the situation. I learned how to market, I learned how to form a company, I learned how to raise venture capital, and I learned how to succeed with that. And those experiences are something I would not have gotten if I would have been purely in the classroom reading the book without, without going out there and trying to succeed. So a lot of people ask me on a daily basis, why am I still in college? Why am I going through this process? And in all honesty, it's because of three people in the audience right now. My mom, dad, and my grandpa. <laughs> they were the ones that got me started. They were the ones that actually bought me that Mac when I was 16 years old that allowed me to make my first app. And for their respect, I'm gonna finish college. I've been... <clears throat> What I want to challenge each and every one of you guys to do is do what you're required to do, but do something more. Do something that you're actually truly passionate about. For me, I'm required to go to college, but it's also not stopping me from running a company on the side. For you, it may be you have your nine to five job, but there's always something you wanted to pursue. Go after that, pursue that dream. Write that book that you've never had in your free time to do because there's always one extra hour in that day. I want you to go out in the world and challenge yourself because that's when you're really gonna innovate. That's when you're gonna drive yourself forward and experiences something you never would have ever done. Thank you.